Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to make this 1 12th scale magazine rack. And the wood I've used again is my favourite, a beche, which is spelled O-B-E-C-H-E. But you could also use something like basswood or lime wood, um, gelatin, anything like that, a nice sort of fine um, craft wood. And the thickness of the wood is 1.5mm and that's 1 16th of an inch. Um, you'll need a craft knife, like this Swan Morton knife, which takes a size 10A blade. Always put a new blade in at the start of a project. A steel rule for measuring and cutting the wood along with your knife. Nice sharp pencil for accurate marking. I've used a scribe um, to shape these sides. That's just a sort of tool with a nice sharp point at the end. And this is out of an old electrical kit, but it does the job really well. You might need a pair of tweezers just to help with the positioning of the smaller parts. Um, some fine grade sandpaper, that's for shaping the parts as well. And then I've used um, a satin varnish to finish my piece, but you could use a clear wax or you could just leave the wood natural. Okay, so the cutting list is coming up next and then we'll get started. We're going to begin by shaping the side pieces. So just cut a scrap of paper that's the same size as the side piece and then draw a line across the shortest edge, six millimetres or a quarter of an inch from the top. Fold the piece of paper in half lengthways and just draw a curved line from the centre of the piece down to that line. So from there, just a nice curve down to that line. And then just cut that out. Open that out and place that onto the piece of wood just so you've got enough room at the top there to fit your pencil nib and just draw around that. Keep that, you'll need it for the other side piece and then take your scribe and just using it like a pencil just go over that line just scoring it into the wood. You don't need to go too deep. Just go over it a couple of times and then swap for your craft knife. And I put a new blade in here which makes this so much easier. But always be aware of your where your fingers are when you're doing it and be really careful. And then just go into the line again, just lightly at first. And then just keep going until you've cut all the way through. And take your time with it. Just use the tip of the knife, do a little bit at a time. you're through. I use this technique quite a lot um, to shape wood and it's useful to know how to do it and worth practicing as well on some scrap wood. Take a piece of fine grade sandpaper and just sand that over. So along the line but also from front to back. Just 
just to create a nice sort of bevel on there. Do that on the other side as well. Get rid of those sharp corners. same with the other side piece. Okay, so turn the piece over and along that straight edge make a pencil mark one and a half millimetres or one sixteenth of an inch from each side. Just make a little pencil mark and then we want to cut away from that line up until the corner. Right, now we're just cutting away a small slither there. Same on the other side, so just below the corner. Just gradually shaped the piece. Do that with both side pieces and then just pop those to one side. Okay so next take two of the horizontal rungs and five of the vertical rungs and on the horizontal rungs we want to make pencil marks and I'll give you these in millimetres and inches and in millimetres it's four and a half millimetres Ten and a half millimetres, seventeen and a half millimetres, twenty five millimetres, and thirty one millimetres. And in inches, that's eleven sixty fourths, thirteen thirty seconds, eleven sixteenths, one inch, and one and seven thirty seconds. And make those pencil marks on both pieces. Take the vertical rungs, I've just got some glue here that I've dispensed onto a piece of card and I'm going to apply it with a cocktail stick and just apply a tiny dot to each end of the vertical rung and then place them in between the horizontal rungs. This bit is quite fiddly. And the final one. And begin by attaching them to the top rung first and each should sit centrally beneath that pencil line that you've just made. So press them together and it might help if you use tweezers here just to manoeuvre the parts.
and then very carefully just bring up the bottom rung and just make sure that all of the pieces are sitting centrally over the line on the bottom piece and then when they are you can press it together just very carefully you've still got a little bit of time to manoeuvre before the glue begins to dry before it dries that they're still straight and then try not to pick that up but just slide it carefully along your worktop and that can then be left to dry and do that with both um, or all, all sets of rungs and this one has now dried they're still quite fragile though so be careful with it and then I'm just going to sand away the pencil marks and this will ensure as well that everything's flush. Okay, we're now going to make a pencil mark down the long edge of the base piece and down the centre of the piece. So just make a pencil mark at each end and join that up and then just continue that pencil line onto each end of the piece, just put a little line at each end and then with your sandpaper on your worktop we want to bevel this edge on each side of the piece so hold it onto the sandpaper at a 45 degree angle and just very gently sweep it towards you and we only want to create a gentle bevel there Turn it over and do the other side. Like that. And then glue the central divide into place so it sits centrally over that line. And you can use the little pencil marks that we made at the end to help position that. That end as well. Remove any excess glue. And then we're going to glue the side pieces so they sit just on that bevel so they're just very slightly angled so apply glue to each edge of the base piece And then choosing so that the neatest side of your piece is on the outside, so facing out. Attach it into place and we'll, we'll sort of angle it when we join the side pieces. So just attach it like that for now. Now just be a slight angle. And then turn it round and attach the other piece again so the nicest side is facing outwards. And that's a good habit to get into, always checking the pieces for any little sort of nicks in the wood or just a side that just looks neater should always be visible. And then just pop that piece carefully to one side and the handle, um, I gave instructions to cut it at 20 mil. But obviously it's not going to be that big, but I wanted to round off the top edge. 
It's very difficult to round off a piece when it's really narrow. So if you cut it bigger than you need it, round it off and then we'll trim it to the size we need. And to round you just want to place it against the sandpaper, sweep it towards you, bringing it into an upright position as you do. And then turn the piece over and do the same on the other side. And then just, that just gives you a nice rounded edge. And then we're just going to trim that piece, just tidy that edge up. Take a finer grade and just neaten that up. Like that. And then I want to trim it to three millimetres or one eighth of an inch. Make a pencil mark at each end. And then trim across. And I just want to sand that bottom edge. like that and that can then be used for something else so take your side pieces and again choosing the nicest edge that will be the outside edge you want to make a pencil mark on the inside edge and centrally so just go across and make a really faint um, pencil mark like that so you're marking the center of each piece and then turn it and then we want to make a pencil mark about four millimetres so just over one eighth of an inch from the top so just go across like that and the same on that piece so four millimetres just above where you made the central mark and then apply glue to one end of the handle And just glue that on that central mark like that just pop that to one side we're now going to attach our main piece so apply glue to one end It's all still rather fragile at the moment, let's just be gentle with it. And then the bottom here should be level with the bottom of the side piece. And at the bottom edge there'll just be a little bit of a gap at either side. little gap and then you can position it so that your side pieces are at an angle and again so there's just a tiny little gap at the top there and just press that down then very carefully just turn it around and do the same on the other side Use your nail to push the piece over and just leave a, the tiniest little gap. Like that. And you can remove any excess glue, just be really careful. If 
you do sort of push anything out of place just quickly move it all back into position Oops. glue is beginning to take now so it's becoming a little bit more sturdy and then apply glue to all of these ends and I find it easier if you actually press it down onto the remaining side first thing to do is make sure that the bottom edge is flush with the bottom of the side helps with this sort of thing if you've got small hands which I haven't <laughs> and again maneuver that side so you've just got that little gap there the edge or a little overhang rather and then before the glue begins to take just come in and maneuver that handle into position so it's sitting in the center there Before the glue dries you've got time to sort of manoeuvre all the pieces to make sure it's all even. And just be really careful when you're pressing it all together because I've done that before and it's all collapsed. That's why this Gorilla Glue is really good because it, it starts to take really quickly. So let the glue dry off and then you can just leave it natural wood if you want to. You could use a clear um, wax on it but I'm actually going to use a clear satin varnish on mine. And there is the completed magazine rack. And for the magazines I just photocopied um, magazines that I had and scaled them down using Photoshop and then I just put a piece of blank paper inside just to create a sort of thicker look and then just pop that in I hope you've enjoyed this project if so please do subscribe as there's lots more to come and for now thank you for watching <laughs>